So, let me explain how a reconfigurable add drop multiplexer works. So, imagine that you have all the colors to be transmitted from the west to the east, left to the right. Okay. Uh, unlike a fiber bracket grating, we would like to now use a WSS as an add drop element. Now, what is this WSS? WSS is a uh, wavelength selective switch. You can electrically control. So, there is an electrical control which decides the wavelength to be added or dropped. We will see how this works in a bit. Uh, let us say I say I want to add, um, I want to drop a specific color. So, you software control the uh, wave shaper, the wavelength selective switch and that specific color gets uh, dropped here. Okay. Uh, the signal bypasses the rest of the signal bypasses. Where do you add the channels? You have another wave shaper. So, instead of having two circulators and FBG, you are talking about two wave shapers now. So, you have to, uh, the, it passes to the next input of the next wave shaper, where you can now add the other two channels. The wave shaper turned around now. So, you can add the other two channels and the signal comes out. Okay. So, this is west to east transmission. Uh, the point to be noted which is different from that of a FBG and circulator is that the wavelengths that you are dropping, the wavelength that you are adding can be dynamically controlled now. Okay? Now, what about the east to west transmission? Of course, uh, you go in here, you have another pair of WSS. This is your drop wavelength and the rest is uh, bypassed and here you can actually add from the transmitter. So, in this node, you can basically construct add drop multiplexer, multiplexers which you can reconfigure. Why is reconfigurability important? Now, with this increase in the bandwidth, what is happening is uh, in a complicated network, we will talk when we will talk about networks, you will realize that different nodes in a metro network could be adding or taking the data away and the, the, the capacity, the load on the network keeps dynamically changing. So, it is always good to have a, a ability to reconfigure the wavelengths that are carrying this data so that all your uh, colors are uh, usually utilized. For example, a certain uh, wavelengths could be very busy throughout, whereas certain other wavelengths in the network need, will, need not have data in it. So, it is always uh, good to have a reconfigurability in your network and as uh, two circulators with FBG will not do the jo job, you need something like a uh, uh, reconfigurable uh, add drop multiplexer for that. And so, these rodems are powered by what are called as wave shapers. Now, how do these wave shapers work? Uh, this is the uh, schematic uh, of a wave shaper that was sold by a specific company. Uh, the specific designs may be very different in different companies, but the working principle remains the same. The heart of any uh, wave shaper or uh, uh, wavelength selective uh, switch, the heart of any wavelength selective uh, switch is what is called as an LCOS device, a liquid crystal switch, which is here. Okay. So, this is an LCOS, uh, S, uh, so this is a liquid liquid crystal optical matrix. Okay. So, this uh, the, the way the liquid crystal system works is uh, by applying an electrical signal, you can decide. So, imagine that this is your uh, panel of your liquid crystal. You have access, electrical access to each panel in your LCOS device. Okay. And depending on the electrical signal that you are applying, you can decide whether this specific uh, pixel is uh, opaque or transparent or you can even decide the phase that uh, is experienced by light that hits this crystal surface uh, that hits this pixel and gets reflected. Okay? So, you can control the amplitude and you can control the phase of the light that is incident on the pixel through an electrical wave. Okay. So, this is the heart of any wavelength selective switch. 
Uh, this wavelength selective switch is also called as a wave shaper for a different reason. I will tell you why a bit later. So, what, how does this work? So, your input light has all these colors. It is allowed to fall on a diffraction grating. So, all this light is coming in in a single path, right? All these colors are focused by a lens onto a diffraction grating. The grating splits the light into uh, different angles. The different wavelengths are spread out in different angles. And at specific location that is uh, predetermined, you are placing this uh, liquid crystal uh, 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 spatial light modulator. Now, spatial light modulator is again the same device that I am uh, describing here. Um, each pixel of the spatial light modulator can be independently controlled through software. So, this is the software system that controls the spatial light modulator. Now, you see the grating has spatially separated all these colors. So, each of these colors are going to fall on specific predetermined locations on uh, this uh, spatial light modulator. So, maybe here you have a certain color, you have a certain color, you have a certain color. And depending on which is the channel that you want to add or drop, let us say you want to drop, uh, uh, absorb a specific, you, you, you want to reflect only a specific channel, you want to drop that specific channel. So, what you do is this specific channel, you make it opaque or you, you increase the reflectivity of the specific channel and all the other channels you make it transparent. So, it like passes through which means that only that particular color will now get reflected and only in that fiber you will have uh, light. Okay. So, you can independently control similarly the amplitude and phase of any of these wavelengths. Right? Now, the whole thing works in a reversible way in the sense that you can now go in with uh, different wavelengths. Uh, the whole system is a reciprocal device. So, multiple colors can get uh, combined into a single uh, fiber and you can electrically control the color that you want to be absent. You want the color to be absent or present in the system. The reason why this is called as a wave shaper is because now if you look at, look at it, you will uh, see that uh, in the uh, spectrum, you can now have a control on the amplitude and uh, you can have a control on amplitude and phase because as I said earlier, the SLM can actually control the phase also of any wavelength, which means you can specifically design a spectrum of a desired uh, amplitude response and a phase response, which means in the time domain, you can get any kind of wave shape. Right? So, in that sense, it is also called as a wave shaper. Of course, in a communication system, the output colors you could uh, put a multiplexer and combine depending on whether you are doing a dropping of channels or whether you are doing a adding of channels. And this is probably one of the most powerful uh, devices that gets very commonly used in uh, dynamic uh, optical networks. So, that brings us to a conclusion on the discussion of different uh, optical components.